How's it going, everybody? Rybrad here today, and I'm back with another episode of This Week in Hockey. And, uh, yeah, uh, I guess it was, a, it was a slow week in hockey, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm going to really have to stretch this one out. Not much to talk about today. Uh, yeah. Oh. Well, we got to start where you all expected me to start. We're going to talk about Tom Wilson and the New York Rangers. And, wow, where do I even begin? The first, I'd like to wish Artemi Panarin well and hope he gets back soon. A forgettable and brutal season for him and the Rangers, and I can't wait to see him get back on the ice next season. Hopefully, when things get back to normal, we'll see Panarin at his best. One of the league's premier players. I can't wait to see him out there doing his thing, as long as it's not against my Buffalo Sabres. As for the incident with Wilson, it is absolutely inexcusable and disgusting that he isn't even suspended for a single game. I've interacted with people on all sides of this argument, and to those defending his action by saying Panarin shouldn't have jumped on him, how would you react when someone is pressing your teammate's neck down with their stick? Excuse me, Mr. Wilson, I believe you're on top of my friend there. Would you mind moving if it's not too much of an inconvenience for you? Honestly, guys, I just think Panarin is sticking up for his teammate, and like Wilson is sticking up for his goalie. But there's a big difference. You've probably watched plenty of hockey scrums by now, and I'll tell you what. There's a lot of pushing and shoving and even some jabs and some slashes. You know, people, you know, get physical, right? It's a hockey scrum. But I've never so seen someone take these things as far as Tom Wilson. The, the actions of Tom Wilson uh, against Buchnevich and especially against Panarin were gutless, cheap, and abhorrent. The intent to injure that Wilson unleashes at times is just disturbing. I'm not mad at him for playing physical or playing near the edge. It's the amount of time he crosses that threshold and how far he goes beyond the threshold of just playing gritty or just being tough to play against or being nasty. He goes out there and it feels like he's intentionally trying to harm players half the time he's out there. And it's about time the league should actually do something about it. There are plenty of players in this league that are looked at as enforcers or guys that are willing to play a gritty game and, and half of those guys are our good contributors to their team too. I mean, look at all the guys that get traded. Uh, Barclay Goodrow actually is now contributing to the Tampa Bay Lightning. I know we all thought a first round pick was crazy for that, but you know, it is a valuable asset to have in the NHL. But none of those guys cross the line quite like Wilson does. I'm not advocating for his type of grit uh, or just grit in general to leave the sport of hockey, nor am I saying he should be banned indefinitely like some of the very reactionary takes, but it's time the league take player safety seriously and make it a priority, and when players act recklessly, they should be appropriately punished. I mean, so many of these times, $5,000 fine? Come on, guys, you gotta at least give him, I mean, as a repeat offender for what he did, I mean, the, uh, the anger he incited just in that game alone is worthy of just sparing him from one game against the Rangers. You could prevent a whole lot of what happened, which I'll touch on here in a second, if you just would have stopped him from playing for a single game against the Rangers. Later on the next day, the Rangers released a statement condemning the NHL's response to Wilson, uh, and it was most, most well received by the fans of teams not named the Washington Capitals and media alike. However, it did result in the Rangers firing their GM and president the very next day as well. Uh, the team stated performance, but I mean, come on. This season was a good season for the Rangers, and I, I seriously don't think you can believe that they were fired due to uh, the, the way they performed this season. I think, you know, it was a very good season for them, all things considered. Everything that could, it could go wrong pretty much did go wrong for the Rangers, uh, and they were a pretty competitive team through the end, but it did sound like their GM and president were trying to distance themselves from this statement, uh, and I think that's where James Dolan... Uh, drew the line and, and pulled the trigger, and rightfully so. The whole organization's got to stand behind what the organization releases in their statements. Chris Drury will take over as both GM and president, and as a former Sabres legend, I will wish him all the best. And finally, tonight's game between the Rangers and the Capitals was incredibly interesting. The first period was not hockey. I I'm pretty sure uh, you'd get more money's worth uh, uh, than you do paying for a UFC primetime fight. Uh, there were six fights in the first six minutes and plenty of action that I'm sure the NHL is loving, which is another thing that I'm just face palming. You guys can't see me, but man, am I disappointed in the league. But they are getting, they're getting, they're reaping all the rewards, all the attentions on the league. I guess they're just subscribing to that no publicity is bad publicity or bad publicity. 
Yeah, you guys know what I mean. No, uh, no bad publicity is or no publicity is bad, good or bad. You know, you know what I mean. I can't figure it out right now. Uh, but the Tom Wilson uh, got into a fight as well. His first shift out there, as well as a line brawl, minus the defenseman, uh, right at puck drop. Uh, these fights sent Tom Wilson out of the game due to an upper body injury, and I really don't think it was an upper body injury. If it is, I hope he gets better soon. Uh, but what I really think happened is the Capitals are holding him out to try and calm everything down and actually to play a game of hockey. Uh, and gee, I wish there was some way Wilson could have, you know, maybe sat this one out and, and, and you know, not have played this one and maybe not have caused this kind of retaliation and we could have avoided this whole thing entirely. I'm not sure there's anything the league could have done. I mean, who would have foreseen the Rangers getting mad and retaliating and trying to fight? Gee, who would have thought? Seriously, even if you believe, or even if you don't believe Tom Wilson was in the wrong, the guys at the Department of Player Safety could at least pretend like they care about player safety and use some logic to think that this was exactly the sort of retaliation that was going to come, uh, and they should have foreseen this. And if they didn't, they all deserve to lose their jobs because I don't see how you look at what happened in the outrage and not see this kind of thing coming. Or they just kind of said, this is going to be good for ratings. Let's keep him in there. Some more Capitals news that doesn't seem to be so uh, <laughs> so polarizing, I should say. Uh, is TJ Oshie scoring a goal after his dad's passing? That must have been such an emotional goal. And, and I hope him and his family uh, are together and grieving and can, and can move forward. And I, I'm sure it's going to be hard. Uh, but I wish them all the best uh, of love and support. And I hope everybody... Um, can, can can give them the attention that they need um, and like, you know, su just support the, the Oshi family. Now it is time, guys, for the Across the Border segment, the segment where I bring to you guys what our friends up north have gotten themselves into this week. Checking in on Cole Caulfield and the Montreal Canadiens, Caulfield got his first and second goals of his career this week. Both in overtime, the first one came against the Ottawa Senators off of a nice feed from Jeff Petrie, making Jeff Petrie's 25th assist of the season, continuing a very nice season for the 33-year-old American. His next goal was then a clutch gene showing yet again, sniping one off the post for an overtime winner against Austin Matthews in the Toronto Maple Leafs. And speaking of Austin Matthews and the Leafs, well, they pretty much continue to run the North. Austin Matthews scored against those same Canadians in that same game with a great display of hand-to-eye and an absolutely perfect finish off the post. Uh, the Leafs are inching closer to winning the North Division. They've clinched a playoff spot, and they'd likely have to face the Winnipeg Jets uh, if things continue to trend the way they are. And uh, yeah, no, that won't provide me any kind of talking points for, for this week in hockey uh, during the playoffs. I'm, I'll likely have to find uh, content in some other series. More Canucks news, and this time it's not on the good one either. Man, this has been a seriously uh, d depressing uh, and in heavy episode of This Week in Hockey, but Jake Vertanen of the Vancouver Canucks is on leave due to a recent sexual assault allegation, uh, and, and my thoughts in prayers are with the victim, and I hope they're on the road to recovery and we get a re resolution to all of this soon. Um, obviously, it, it's great that victims now have a voice uh, in all of this, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait before I say anything uh, more till we get more information, but I just hope that everybody involved can, can come out of this thing um, better, better in the end. Finally, let's go ahead and end this episode on a positive note here, guys. Uh, do we, oh my God, wait, what? No, this can't, no, I, I think it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a goalie goal. Congratulations, Thomas Siguin of the Quebec Ramparts. You have scored the first goalie goal of this week in hockey, and I hope there are more to come, uh, and we get to see more goalies scoring some goals, but congratulations to him. That's got to be an awesome feeling, uh, and not something you see every day. You don't see goalies scoring goals very often, as you guys know. And speaking of goalies, Ryan Miller has officially announced it quits has called it quits, has announced his retirement from the NHL. He played his last game uh, within this last week here. Millsy was a phenomenal goaltender and was honestly my favorite player growing up as a kid. Uh, an absolutely phenomenal career. He finishes with the most wins as a United States-born goaltender and the 14th most wins all time in NHL history. He made plenty of highlight reel worthy saves and in my opinion should have his number 30 retired at Key Bank Center in Buffalo. 
He was that important to this franchise. And I can only imagine what that building would sound like if he does get his jersey retired. Finally, we're going to end this thing on something rather cute and uplifting. Uh, in a pregame uh, shoot around, Gabriel Landeskog flipped a puck at his daughter who was sitting on the other side of the glass. And she didn't even flinch. She freaking smiled. She has ice in her veins, and that is a future goaltender in the making. Nerves of steel in that little girl. I can tell you what, I probably would have flinched uh, even if I was expecting it. It's just one of those feelings, but damn, she was ready for it. I wonder if she's done that before. Either way, she's got nerves of steel. Good for her, and a cute little story to end this one for you guys. I hope that clip sent you out of here with a smile, and remember, if you have any stories, highlights, or comments, please sure to... Be, please be sure to let me know in my Discord for next week. I will try to include as many stories from you guys or clips or highlights, even if you guys have recreational highlights. You guys scored a goal in your uh, hockey game this week? Go ahead, send it in. I'll talk about it. Let me know where you're from. What was the goal? What was the situation? Even if it's a goal, your first goal or your hat trick goal and a 7-3 loss, I'd still love to show it here this week in hockey. It's not just the NHL. I'd love to talk about all hockey. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys next week.